Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. Right now I'm working on a 2x2 terrain board that I want to cover in static grass. But I figured the price of static grass and shipping would be a bit much, so I made some of my own using super cheap material. Before I got started, I made a crease down the middle of a large sheet of paper. Trust me, this will make things much easier later. Commercial static grass is usually made of nylon fibers, but I used hemp twine. Took a pair of scissors and started cutting it into short lengths. This looks like it might take a while, but you can get a good volume pretty quickly. And it's the kind of thing you can easily do while listening to a podcast. If you need a recommendation, you can find my history podcasts linked below. Next, I ran the cuttings through a sieve to make sure they're all properly separated before coloring. The creased paper comes in clutch here because it makes it way easier to pour them. For coloring, I used some summer green and some dabs of primary yellow and mint green acrylics. Then poured in a whole lot of water and stirred it in. This looks ridiculously bright, but the fibers will be darker when they dry, so it works out. The reason I poured the paint into the container with the fibers rather than the other way around is that the paint container will have some undissolved paint in it, and that would create unusable clumps. After leaving the fibers to soak overnight, I sieved them out and put them in a baking pan. Put the water aside, you can get a few batches out of it. The pan went into the oven for 40 minutes at 110 degrees centigrade. That's 230 Fahrenheit for you Americans. We're not trying to cook them, we're just drying them out. With the fibers cooled down and dried completely, I ran them through the sieve again to separate them. Now, the filtered bits will be ready to use, but you might end up with a bunch of clumps like this. This usually happens if you have a lot of long fibers. You can cut these up with your scissors and uh, run them through the sieve again. They'll fall apart pretty quickly that way and uh, they'll give you more material to work with. In case you're wondering, I did try to dye the whole thing first and uh, cut it apart later. However, I found two problems with this. First, the string needed about twice the time to soak in the dye before the color was absorbed properly. Second, the fibers tend to stick together a lot more, and breaking them up is a pain in the ass. In the end, I found it much easier to cut first, then color. Okay, let's give the static grass a quick test run. I used undiluted tacky glue here, which is not a great way to apply static grass. Usually you want the glue to be runnier so the grass can penetrate into it. After sprinkling the static grass on, I let it sit for a little while, and used the balloon I dropped onto a sweater to get a static charge. This encourages the grass to stand up and removes any that wasn't properly attached. Once the glue was dried, I checked on them again. The coverage is good and the testers have a good volume to them, which is exactly what I wanted. The length is very random, which is fine for wild grass. I made around a liter and change of this in total. Market prices vary by brand, but I think that works around to a bit over $20 before you factor in shipping and taxes. I definitely used well under $5 of material here, so I'm going to call that a win. Now, if you want to see what I'm going to be using this on, I guess you'll just have to hang around for a bit. Bye!